Good evening, good evening, everybody. Let me know who you are, where you're coming from, where you're watching from. I'm coming on live tonight to talk about the seven-day solemn assembly and particularly fasting. Hey, Craig, bless you. Good to see you on. Tom Steele, Shabbat Shalom, man. Pastor Rodney, good evening. Thank you for joining. What's been going on? What's been going on? What's God been saying to you guys? What you're hearing? There's a solemn assembly of prayer that God is is blowing the trumpet in Zion, in the church, in the body of Christ. Craig, you know, uh, you helped me get to Africa in April. And in April, I did a seven-day solemn assembly in a church in Uganda, Africa, During the week of the Feast of Passover, and uh, it was when I actually rolled out the the revelation of the seven days, praying through the seven phrases of the Lord's Disciples' Prayer. And it was there in Uganda, in the midst of the Holy Ghost being poured out upon all flesh in the midst of the Spirit of God moving mightily that the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, um, I'm going to have you take these seven-day solemn assembly prayer gatherings uh, all over the world connecting my body to my heart and desire to pray to call heaven to earth and preparing the earth for my return. And so I assumed that it would primarily be just through uh, traveling uh, to different churches and, and traveling to Uh, different regions, but uh, over the last few months, the Holy Spirit has convicted me concerning the awesome opportunity we have through social media, through the social networks, to minister the gospel all over the world at one time from our offices or our cars or our living rooms right from a phone that's the size of a man's hand. And so... During this seven-day solemn assembly in Uganda, Africa, God brought all the churches in the region under this particular ministry, Bishop Nelson Kabuka, the Exodus Christian uh, Network. And, And these churches came together And I taught them how to seek the Lord in solemn assemblies of prayer and fasting, praying through the disciples' Lord's prayer in phrases, attributing a phrase to one of the seven days of the week, praying that phrase in the Holy Ghost to receive revelation, culminating in God manifesting himself greatly, in their midst and in the region where solemn assemblies of prayer, uh, prayer and fasting are called to seek God's face. And in Africa, I believe that the Lord called me there to do it because in Africa, 
You, you need God. He's all you have most of the time. Those, those people, most of them don't have jobs. They don't have, uh, majority of the people don't have a, a regular um, nine to five type job. They live from the earth. They live from within. And, uh, and through these uh, seven days, the Lord miraculously moved. Um, and that's when he spoke to me to take these solemn assemblies to cities of refuge throughout the earth where his presence and his power would be released. I didn't know that the Lord would have me to do them online. Seven days of prayer and fasting online. But a few months ago, the Holy Spirit um, put it in my heart to call a seven-day prayer challenge. We got challenges for every other thing out in the social media sphere. He challenged me to call a seven-day prayer challenge, fasting and praying through the seven phrases of the disciples' prayer. And that challenge begins tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7. We're going to uh, begin praying and fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and we're going to be meditating on one of the phrases of the disciples' prayer uh, from, from our book, When You Pray, Say. It's a book I, I've been writing all year, and uh, I'm finally done with it. Um, it has been endorsed by prayer giants in the faith, men that I have had uh, access to and relationship with who have influenced my life in prayer and who have influenced my life in ministry. Mike Bickle uh, one, being one where uh, I was blessed to serve for three years uh, at the International House of Prayer on staff on the leadership team. I was uh, blessed to meet with him behind closed doors uh, with a leadership team every Tuesday uh, during my time at the International House of Prayer and, and received from him on a regular basis. He writes this important book, uh, Directing Our Focus to, on Encountering Christ in Prayer to Transform Our Hearts and Accelerate the Promises of God will inspire and help anyone who reads it. Also, uh, Rabbi Kurt Snyder, who is another uh, influence in my life, um, he, he also has endorsed the book. Bishop Timothy Clark has read and endorsed the book. And um, Bob Sorge, Sorge has endorsed the book. And so, uh, but the, the thing that I believe that the Lord is uh, impressing upon my heart in this season as I have finished the writing of the book is calling solemn assemblies of prayer and fasting in preparation for what's coming in the earth in 2020 and beyond. I, I believe in 2020, we are go it's going to be a a prophetic acceleration of the promises, vision, purposes of God in the earth. And if you have a word from the Lord, if you have a prophecy that's been on the shelf or been on the back burner somewhere, if God's spoken something to you in dreams and in visions, uh, uh, these days as we are coming into 2020 are strategic for you. God wants to position you for fulfillment and manifestation of the prophetic promises and the uh, word of the Lord over your life. And there are verses of scriptures that I have shared over the weeks leading up to the 17th through the 23rd uh, from Ezekiel 
12, 21 through 28, and from Habakkuk 2, verses 2 through 4, that basically say in the, in the year of the vision of God, there will be no more delay of the word that he has spoken. The word that I've spoken, he says in Ezekiel 12, I will perform it. I will do it and I will no longer delay the performance of my word. And I believe that is a significant word for 2020, for your life. And I also um, uh, received the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter and the second verse that talks about, I will stand on my watch and I will watch to see what the Lord will say to me. Uh, and he said unto me, write the vision and make it plain. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, though it tarry, wait for it. For it will not tarry, it will surely come. And uh, I believe that those of you that have visions from God that have been written down, that have been, uh, you know, recorded, and uh, you've been waiting on those things to come to pass, or you've been waiting for them to uh, actually hasten for, for fulfillment, I believe these days that we are coming up on in 2020 are the appointed times for the fulfillment of your vision, of your word, of your prophecy. And so tonight I just want to briefly sh share with you how to uh, receive from God in prayer uh, faster through fasting. You can actually uh, receive from God faster through fasting. And there's a whole section in the book on fasting and praying. Um, Jesus, when he taught on prayer, he leads into his teaching on prayer with three disregarded virtues and three disregarded disciplines that I believe is the main reason why we don't see God in fullness, in power, in his presence, in his glory. And therefore, in many churches and expressions of Christianity, we have to manipulate the people to respond to God or... We just have our churches set up strictly as a corporation, strictly as a business, and we and, and our churches are no different than uh, restaurants or, or 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 shopping centers or shopping malls. There's one on every side of town or on every corner. And uh, they're, they're like consumers where, you know, you, you just decide which one you like the best and you go there based on whatever their presentation is. But when we return to God's disciplines in receiving from God through prayer, through fasting, through giving, God will show himself strong on our behalf. The glory of God will be uh, uh, manifested and uh, we won't uh, be responding or we won't uh, uh, we won't be susceptible to manipulation because sad to say uh, much of the body of Christ, is uh, in the throes of manipulation and control in their presentation of ministry. And the way that you know that there is uh, undoubtedly either manipulation or some kind of worldly, uh, you know, 
uh, presentation that is geared towards uh, tickling your uh, ears or soul is there's no prayer going on. There's no prayer going on. There's not a prayer time in, in, in many ministries throughout the country anymore. There's no prayer time. There's, there's Bible study, there's midweek service, there's Sunday morning service, but, but uh, there's no prayer service. And, and and because there's no prayer, there's no corporate prayer going on. We have to either run our businesses or run our ministries like businesses. We have to have uh, the the very best and very top level administrators come in to fill our fill our pill pulpits. And run our churches, and I'm not against administration, but when that's all you have, uh, bringing people together, administration, gifts, uh, talents, abilities, money, and there's no prayer, you just have a business. All you have is a corporation. You don't have the church of the living God. You 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 have a business, you have a corporation, you you know. You you have uh, a presentation that is not, Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, not a house of preaching, not a house of singing, although those things will happen in a presentation where people are gathering to pray, there will be prophecy that come out of prayer and worship, there will be gifts that flow out of prayer and worship, but when you only have those things and not prayer, you will inevitably end up in manipulation and control, which basically is witchcraft. It's the entering into the spirit realm and doing things in the spirit realm without God Jesus as Lord of your life or of your ministry. And so we've got to learn how to pray and we've got to learn how to receive from God in prayer faster through fasting. The three virtues that Jesus leads his prayer teaching with in Matthew 6, he begins in verse 1 talking about uh, the virtue and discipline of giving. He begins by talking about the virtue and discipline of giving. And he says, when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored by men. So he's, he's getting ready to teach them uh, the disciplines of a disciple. And he does not say, if you give, when you give, when you give to the poor, when you give, do not sound a trumpet uh, as uh, the hypocrites do. Then in uh, verse uh, 4 or 5, he says, when you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites where they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say that they have their reward. And then the last, when you, is when you fast. Verse uh, 7, uh, when, or verse uh 16, whenever you fast, do not uh, put on a gloomy face. And so those three disciplines are a part of the recipe of how we receive from God in prayer faster. How we receive from God in prayer faster. How do you receive faster uh, from God? You've got to mix some fasting with your praying and your giving. But all three are a part of the ingredients of dialoguing and relating and receiving from God. 
You got to add prayer with fasting with giving. Prayer, fasting, giving. Prayer, fasting, giving. And so we try to do one or the other or one without the other two. And, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, we end up in a futile presentation of relationship. God so loved the world that he gave. And so, so giving is a part of uh, God's nature. Giving is a part of the nature of God. And, and, and so uh, when we talk about these uh, disciplines, when we talk about these virtues, we've got to bring them together. And so in the book of Joel, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, call a solemn assembly of prayer going into 2020 to accelerate the prophetic promises of God for this prophetic year. So Joel 114 is the beginning verse that we find what God wants to do through those who hear the trumpet sound, who hear the word and the voice from the Lord to gather. Listen, listen at Joel 114. It says, consecrate a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord at last for the day, for the day of the Lord is near. Abba, shekorri abba. So he says, consecrate a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, gather the elders, all the inhabitants of the land. Now, the context of this in Joel is a agricultural crisis or famine that had hit the land. And the answer for an agricultural crisis or famine that hits your life, whether it is personal, whether it is uh, 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 corporate in your region, the, 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 the actual... Uh, Wisdom from God is to call a gathering or solemn assembly of prayer. If you're if you're lacking in any area of your of your life economically, financially, uh, in your home, in your church, you need to call a solemn assembly of prayer. Then verse uh, one of chapter two, it says again. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain, let the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, surely it is near. And then in verse 15, he says it again. He says, uh, blow a trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. And so uh, these verses, these three called solemn assemblies shown here in Joel in the context of a agricultural crisis or a famine in the land, a military crisis uh, in, in Joel chapter two, where an army, an invading army was coming against them. Uh, he says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Call a solemn assembly. Now, you've got to know that the Lord is calling you when he, when he blows a trumpet throughout the, the, the region or the body of Christ or throughout the church. You've got to know that he's calling you. You've got to know that this is a call to a corporate gathering of prayer for either what's about to happen or what's happening right now. And I believe it's a combination. I believe that what's about to happen in the earth is going to warrant us coming together in stadiums of worship and prayer to magnify and glorify and seek the face of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come into our regions, to come into our cities, 
hallelujah, to show himself strong on our behalf. I, I believe there's something coming down the pike in 2020 that's going to be both great and terrible. I believe that there's something coming down the pike in 2020, hallelujah, where there's going to be both revival and riot. I believe there's something coming down the pike in 2020 where there's going to be a shaking of everything that can be shaking. Hallelujah. And uh, this, this time of fasting is a part of the remedy to either lessen the shaking or the judgment in a region, uh, to advert it altogether, or to give you strength to endure the shaking without offense. But I believe what Joel is telling us that when we fast, when we come together in solemn assemblies of prayer, uh, you will see the restoration of the years that the locusts have eaten. According to Joel, you will see him give the grain, the new wine, and the oil. According to Joel, you will see him release the former and the latter rain all together. Together. What God did in the past, what God wants to do in the future, coming together at once in one period, financially, hallelujah, spiritually, economically, God wants to do it all in one time, one season, one month, one year. And I believe this 2020 year, the year of the appointed time for the fulfillment of your vision is the season to fast, pray, come together, and seek his face for the release of all that God wants to do in your life, in your family, in your region. And so November the 17th, which is tomorrow, uh, through uh, November the 23rd, which is next Saturday, we're going to be fasting from 6 to 6. And there, there are several types of fast that um, that um, we we basically uh, have in Scripture that is important that you realize. There's the uh, there is the absolute fast. That's the fast without uh, food or water. That's that three day Esther fast that Esther actually called when uh, there uh, the the children of Israel. Uh, were the, there was an edict, a death decree released over the children of Israel in Persia uh, by Haman. Esther called a three-day fast, no water, no food. Uh, then there is the partial fast where it is uh, just food and, uh, and drinking water and or juices. Um, then there is the Daniel fast, which is no pleasant foods, just vegetables or fruit. And, uh, and these are s several different types of fast. Then there is the Benedict fast, named after St. Benedict uh, in 575 uh, AD. Uh, and the Benedict fast is you eat one meal a day. After 6 p.m. That's the fast that we're doing beginning tomorrow um, at, at 6 a.m. We're eating one meal a day after 6 p.m. And we're going to pray through the Lord's disciples' prayer and phrases. If you haven't uh, signed up to be a part of this solemn assembly, you need to go to the link on this page. On this link... Uh, you will be able to sign up and uh, you will get one of the books. You'll get uh, the notes from the teachings that will be uh, uh, shared each evening at 7. You will also get uh, five online courses teaching you from the book, When You Pray, Say. Um, you'll get the coaching from my wife and I. Uh, in the mornings and in the evening, every day uh, from tomorrow morning all the way till Saturday. 
And so you get the book, you get the teaching notes, you get the live in the morning, you get a webinar, a closed webinar in the evening, you get the coaching, you'll get the activations uh, for all of that uh, for $99. Remember I told you a solemn assembly, a gathering of prayer uh, requires giving, fasting, and praying. Giving, fasting, and praying. And, uh, and that amount, uh, $99, is nothing for a week uh, of you being infused with wisdom and revelation to accelerate the promises of God in your life for what God wants to do in your life in 2020. Uh, I'll send the book out um, uh, next day. Uh, you can get it next day. Those that have already signed up, their book has already come. We'll be teaching out of the book. We'll be uh, reading the meditation for the day out of the book. And so these seven days, we're going to be fasting. Now, what is it about fasting that releases you to receive from God faster? Okay, I want to give you that real quick. What is it about fasting that uh, releases you to receive from God faster? Uh, listen, when we fast, we uh, basically quiet our flesh so that we can hear and see clearly in the spirit. We quiet our flesh. We, 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 we allow uh, the spirit of God to increase as we decrease. We allow the spirit of God to increase as we decrease. Uh, what you've got to understand about receiving from God is that God is a spirit. And so you can't receive from God in the flesh. In other words, uh, uh, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God or your fleshly uh, desires and the works of the flesh. Uh, those those uh, works of the flesh will hinder you from receiving from God. And so when we fast, we bring our flesh under. Uh, when we fast, we don't get anything God wanted did not already want to give us. I mean, he, he's promised us whatever it is that we receive from him. And it has already been promised and given. It's, it's yes and amen concerning the promises of God. But when we fast, we bring our flesh under so that we can hear and see and receive from God by the spirit in the spirit. And so when we fast, we position ourselves to receive from God through the spirit, quieting our flesh, bringing our flesh under subjection. Listen, the reason why most people don't pray is because their flesh is leading and directing their every move. They're not led by the spirit. Uh, uh, they, they give their body whatever their body wants whenever it wants it. Listen, you can't feed your flesh and receive from God in the spirit. You can't feed your flesh anything it wants whenever it wants, however it wants it, and, and not restrain your flesh and receive from God in the spirit. You've got to learn how to restrain yourself. You've got to learn how to tell your body no. <laughs> you got to learn how to give your spirit preeminence over your flesh. And the way you do that is you discipline your body uh, and bring it under subjection to the spirit by fasting. Fasting helps you receive from God faster. Fasting helps you to receive from God faster. I remember back when I was in my 20s, one, uh, one season of my life, I was having trouble uh, getting up praying at the time that I had developed the habit of praying. When I was a, uh, 
When I was single, uh, I, I had developed a habit of getting up and praying uh, early in the morning in the Holy Ghost uh, for hours. And so uh, about a year into uh, my marriage, when I got married, I was, I was having struggle getting up praying uh, at the time that I was accustomed to getting up praying. And I remember, I remember I asked the Lord uh, about uh, my struggle getting up praying, and, uh, and he took me back to a, um, a known phrase for the morning meal, and he said, uh, what uh, is the term breakfast? Breakfast. What is that? What is that term that that you have in that morning meal? What is it called? And, and you know, I, I remember the Holy Spirit uh, giving me a a lesson in eating uh, in a way that I had not heard or received before. A lesson in eating the first meal of the day. I said, "It's it's breakfast." He says, "What is that?" breakfast what is that word and 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 he broke it down in a in a way that i was able to see that uh, my body was supposed to fast normally naturally as a natural course of everyday living every evening to the morning and the morning meal we call bread fast, break fast, breakfast. It's supposed to be a time of fasting from about, uh, you know, the sundown one day to the sun up the next day. Your body needs to uh, actually uh, stop eating and start uh, producing and regenerate. Uh, uh, what's the word, rejuvenating itself, and it was made to do that at night while we sleep. And the Lord showed me that, that at that moment, uh, he said, uh, what do you do through on into the night? And, and at the time, me and my wife, we was, you know, married about a year or so, and, uh, and we liked uh, watching Seinfeld and eating... Um, I liked eating, um, what's that, uh, uh, ho-hos. <laughs> and I would eat a whole box of ho-hos watching Seinfeld with my wife. And we were just having a, we were just having a ball from about uh, 10, 10 o'clock till about midnight to 1 in the morning. And by the end of that, uh, Seinfeld, and then maybe uh, the late night, and then maybe uh, ESPN, the late night uh, sports center, uh, that box of uh, ho-hos or that box of uh, uh, Swiss cake rolls, that's what they were, Swiss cake rolls. That box of Swiss cake rolls would be gone, and a, and a, and a quarter milk, <laughs> Swiss cake rolls and a quarter milk. And uh, and so I'm I'm up trying to get up like at five thirty six in the morning to spend with the Lord, and I couldn't get up. And it was like a season, you know. And I wasn't putting two and two together. I'm twenty eight, twenty nine years old, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm young, and I, I you know, I, I'm still gonna get up. I wasn't putting two and two together. He said, if 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 you don't uh, uh, watch. When you eat, what you eat, uh, it affects your disciplines even in seeking me. And, uh, and at that moment, I have never put two, to two, two and two together that uh, we actually fast or should fast every day from the last meal of the day to the first meal of the next day. So after dinner, to break in our fast at the, the beginning of the day, it's a fast time. And if we actually uh, stop eating, 
<laughs> we won't have a problem sleeping and we won't have a problem getting up when we need to get up when the Holy Spirit moves us. And I remember the Lord spoke to me. He said, you shouldn't call that first meal a day breakfast because you, you, you've been eating all through the night. You have... You, you're not breaking no fast. You've been eating all through the night. And, uh, and at that moment, I realized that, that if we're going to, you know, uh, seek the Lord, we're going to have to have disciplines uh, and we're going to have to bring our flesh under, under subjection. And we're going to have to do it intentionally because... We want to spend time in the presence of God, receiving from God, who is a spirit. Is, is Swiss cake rolls and a quart of milk sin? I don't know. I don't think so. No, I'm, I don't. I hope not. <laughs> but but it does hinder the flow of receiving from God in uh, a prayer if you weight it down. And you are you are you are you are allowing your flesh to just give you know giving your flesh anything it wants whenever it wants you know and so I, I've developed a a a fasted lifestyle I've developed a fasted lifestyle and I encourage that uh, seven days without fasting makes one week. <laughs> W-E-A-K. Seven days without fasting makes one week. Listen, you should fast at least once a week. This week, we're going to fast seven days as a solemn assembly of prayer to God for what God wants to do to uh, give us his word for our lives for 2020 to accelerate the prophetic promises of God. This is a strategic call time in the presence of God. And I just wanted to come on here and, and call you to it. Call you to fast, call you to prayer, call you to a solemn assembly, a week of seeking the Lord for 2020 and beyond. For what God wants to do in your life in this season. Before the end of the year, God wants to do something that will blow your mind. And he will do it as you position yourself to hear from him. As you position yourself to receive from him. As you position yourself to know what he's saying when he's saying it and then say that. And so that's the, uh, that's the seven day prayer challenge and solemn assembly of prayer. November the 17th, tomorrow morning, I will be on here live uh, doing uh, our when you pray, say uh, prayer uh, live six in the morning. We will be praying the first phrase of the disciples Lord's prayer, our father. And, uh, we'll be, uh, praying it in the Holy ghost. That's how the Lord showed me in the dream that I had. That's in this book. Uh, he said, uh, he showed me in a dream. I had a dream. I was praying in the Holy Ghost, the phrases, breaking them up in phrases, the Lord's Prayer in phrases. I had a microphone in my hand. I was rocking on the fourth row of an empty prayer room saying the phrases, our Father which art in heaven, and then praying it in tongues until I got a revelation of God the Father. Hallowed be thy name praying him in tongues until I got a revelation of God the Son. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Praying it in tongues until I got a revelation of God the Holy Ghost. Give us this day our daily bread. I was praying it in tongues until I got a revelation of the word of God to produce supernatural divine supply and prophetic provision. Praying it in the Holy Ghost. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And around that phrase, the church, the room, the prayer room starts filling up with people. 
And I looked up in the dream and there was worship teams on the platform and in the back of the church there were worship teams waiting to get on the platform. It was a house of prayer. It was a 24-7 house of prayer and God was showing me in the dream how he's going to build his house of prayer. He's going to build his house of prayer as we pray the way he taught us to pray in the Holy Ghost over the phrases of the Lord's Prayer. And uh, so Sunday is our Father. And you can, as you pray in the Holy Ghost, get a revelation of God as Father. And you can get a revelation of your responsibilities uh, as a father if you're a male. And uh, you can get healed of father wounds. We're going to actually have a teaching on uh, the fatherhood of God and the anointing of God as Father and that spirit that has hindered us from receiving from God because our earthly fathers may not have been the fathers that we needed them to be. As a, as a result, we are having trouble receiving from God as Father. God is going to heal that and then accelerate your answers and receiving from God. When you get a revelation of hallowed be thy name, that's the son's anointing in prayer. That's the son's anointing in prayer. That's sonship anointing. Remember the Bible, Jesus in John 17 says, I have come to declare your name to the men you've given me out of the earth. So the son declares the name of the father. So hallowed be thy name represents the sonship anointing. And when you get that anointing, praying in the Holy Ghost over God as son over hallowed be thy name. You understand who you are. You understand your identity. You will hear the voice of God saying, thou art my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen, Jesus knew who he was because he heard his father speak over him who he was. Listen, if you've never had a father speak into your life and give you purpose and give you destiny, listen. You can be healed of identity issues by praying in the spirit and letting God father you and bring you into sonship and cause you to receive your inheritance in the name of Jesus. Listen, this, the third phrase, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So the third phrase, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It is representative of God, the Holy Ghost, the power to bring the kingdom from heaven to earth. And so that third phrase on that third day, we're going to get you filled up with the Holy Ghost. We're going to teach and activate you in the gifts of the spirit, get you praying in tongues so that you can get a revelation of the kingdom righteousness nature of God, the righteousness consciousness, the peace consciousness of the kingdom and the joy consciousness of the kingdom, which was, which is what the kingdom is, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so all through the week, we're going to pray the phrases of the Lord's Prayer and we're going to teach and activate you in those phrases and in the gifts of the spirit that operate in your life in Jesus name. But, but, but the way that we're going to actually accelerate everything God does through the week is we're going to fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Listen, go to that link, click that link, join this seven-day solemn assembly, 
Get your book. When you pray, say, receive the teachings. I'll send you the link for the webinar, Zoom webinar, each evening from 7 to 9. And we will position ourselves for a Joel 2 outpouring of the Spirit that releases an Acts 2 revival. Joel 2 will release Acts 2. Joel 2 solemn assemblies will release Acts 2 outpour of the Holy Spirit. And I'm excited if you can't tell. I'm excited for what God is about to manifest in our lives over these next seven days. And so uh, the link is in the uh, comment section. If you uh, if you need um me to, uh, if you need any questions, if you have any questions about these next seven days, uh, you can either message me or you can put it in the comment section right here in this live and I'll, I'll respond to it, uh, even after I'm off this live. But I just wanted to come on and, and encourage you to fast with the prayer for the week. Fast with us. Uh, you say, uh, well, I don't fast. Well, ask God for the grace to fast. Listen, anytime I'm getting ready to go on a fast for days leading up to it, I I'll ask God, Lord, give me grace to seek your face. <laughs> I'll say that. I I'll ask God, Lord, that that's my favorite phrase to ask for, 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 for fasting grace. Lord, give me grace to seek your face. Give me grace to seek your face. You know, you can ask for grace to fast and, and, and the fast uh, will, will there, there, there will be a grace there to do it. When you, when you fast, you also need to read the word and pray. See, some people don't eat and, and the reason why they have trouble being hungry is because they don't eat the word while they're not eating natural food, you've got to replace the natural food with the word of God. And then you've got to pray. You've got to spend time talking to God so he can talk back to you and feed you with manna from on high. And so uh, let's do that this week and let's expect God to show himself strong on our behalf. And, uh, and I believe that you will see the acceleration of the prophetic promises of God over your life. Hey, I'm going to stop and pray for you now and pray that God's grace be upon your life uh, for this solemn assembly. Uh, if you are wanting to join us for the live uh, webinars at night uh, and, and you want to uh, get the uh, the book and the teaching notes from each uh, night of the the live webinar. Uh, just go to the link in the comment section or brondonmathis.org. Go to brondonmathis.org, and uh, I'm gonna put that link in 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 here right now. Go to brondonmathis.org, scroll all the way down on that website to the, uh, the near the bottom where it says uh, W-Y, uh, what is it, when you pray, W-Y-P-S, seven day prayer challenge. Uh, the link that says seven day prayer challenge, press on that link. You'll get all the information. You'll get the daily schedule. You'll get the teachings for the day. You'll get the scriptures for the day, uh, that, that we'll be meditating on and you'll be able to, uh, follow us, track with us, uh, throughout, uh, the seven days, uh, go to that link and, uh, and press on that link and you'll get all the information you need and uh, how to join, how to give uh, for these seven days. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you position us and prepare us to enter into the seven-day consecration. I ask that you bless us and keep us and make your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. 
I ask that you lift up your countenance upon us. And I ask that you give us peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll see you in the morning. Get your day started with prayer from 6 to 7. Then you go to church. You're already in there. You're already in the spirit, already hearing from God and what what the pastor, the bishop saying, there'll be confirmation. You'll, you'll be hearing word of confirmation after word of confirmation. Or if you're a pastor, you'll be flowing like you never flowed before. And so God bless you. You guys have a blessed day, blessed week. In Jesus' name.